All right, young people, it's good to see you. I hope all is well in your home. I hope uh, everyone is uh, um, faring well with the COVID. You know, there's been a COVID outbreak, not only in our church, other churches as well, at Norfolk Naval Shipyard, the fire department, police department. It's all around. It's hit uh, the Western Branch, Chesapeake area very hard. And so I know some of our uh, uh, members have it. I know some of your parents have it. And we are praying diligently that God would uh, show mercy and give grace uh, to help uh, the families that we know that do have it. Um, uh, just have mercy and help them through uh, the COVID times. Uh, so if you had it when you went to the wilds and came back and God was very merciful to us and no one really got really sick but uh, uh, it seems like it's hit uh, the elderly people in our church as well uh, we need to pray for Marty Rock who's in the hospital uh, her oxygen levels are kind of low and we're praying that God would uh, bring them up Mrs. Palale should be getting out of the hospital soon she is um, <clears throat> She's doing much better. I think they gave her the drugs that they gave the president. And uh, she responded to that. We praise the Lord for that. But uh, other people, we need to pray for Mrs. Peterson, who has stage 4 lung cancer and liver cancer. And um, <clears throat> others probably that you know about that I do not know about. Um, the Powells, um, the Baileys, uh, the Turners all have covid and uh, some are coming out of it, some are just going into it. So, uh, teenagers, be praying. Uh, prayer shows our dependence upon our God, and it shows how much we need Him. And I'm going to pray right now for some of those families and pray that God would fill me with His Spirit and teach us some things about being a leader, a biblical leader. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your goodness. We thank you that you're never too busy to hear us, to hear our prayers. And God, we come to you today asking, interceding on the behalf of people that are sick. Lord, we, uh, we do thank you for this vaccine that's come out. Lord, I, I pray that you'd continue to work in Mrs. Palale's life. Lord, thank you that she's feeling better. Her oxygen levels are up. That she'll be coming home, Lord willing, soon. We pray, pray for Marty Rock. Uh, Lord, would you be gracious to her? Would you guide the doctor's hands, give them wisdom on what direction to go? As I know they're giving her steroids, I pray you'll bring her oxygen levels up. Um, Lord, I, I, I do pray you'll break the fever. I pray for Mrs. Edwards and her daughter, Lori, who just discovered they have COVID as well. <clears throat> Lord, would you be with them? I know they're high risk having uh, diabetes. So, Lord, would you intercede? We intercede on their behalf, asking God that you would show mercy, give grace and healing to them as they go through uh, the COVID season. Lord, I think of the Powells and the Baileys, Jason Everett, others who have, who have COVID, Lord. Um, Lord, would you show your hand of mercy upon these people's lives? So God, we, we need your help. I need your help today as I teach on being a biblical leader. Lord, would you teach us things from your word? And not only teach us, God, help us, give us uh, may your Holy Spirit point out areas in our lives that need to change so we be can become the biblical leader that we need to be. So Lord, take over this service, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. A biblical leader. That's what we've been talking about. <clears throat> and who is our example as a biblical leader? Of course, it's Christ. Jesus Christ was the greatest leader that walked on the planet. And we've been talking about his way as review uh, of, as far as what a biblical leader is, he's different. And it takes someone different to make a difference in our lives. 
And so we have Christ as our example. He was a different kind of leader. He had a different heart. He had a different goal. He said, I always do those things that please the Father. He had a different authority. He had the Word of God, of course. He was the Word of God. And he had a different spirit about him. Christ's disposition was, he was sensitive. He had spiritual antennas up for the needs of others. You know that story about uh, John chapter 4. He said, I, I must needs go through Samaria. Why? Because he had to meet a lady there that was broken over her relationships. <clears throat> and tell her that he was the Messiah. And she trusted him and turned her whole village upside down for Jesus Christ. So he was sensitive to the needs of others. And you know what? As a leader, that's what I want to be like. I want to be like Jesus. Uh, sensitive to the needs of other people, especially during this time of, of difficulty that people are going through that have COVID. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit how you can apply this practical principle of being a leader, a loving leader. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A biblical leader is different in his love. Different because he has the power to love people. A different love. Love never faileth. Anything that never fails cannot be natural. It has to be beyond natural. And so we see that, you know, I've had I've had craftsman tools that break and they have a lifetime warranty on it. But they're really not lifetime warranty. They, they replace them with another tool like a sawzall or maybe a ratchet that breaks but I just get the same one it's just being replaced God's love never ever fails it doesn't have to be replaced because it's constant it never ends matter of fact I got to share this with you I wrote this down in my Bible I've read this to you many times teens but this this principle has changed my life God's love for you will never change. The most consistent thing about you is not how much you love God, but how much God loves you and me. He has never not loved you. His love has never been off of you, not for one second. He always loves you. There is not one thing you can do to make Him love you more. There's not one thing, you, anything, I'm, I'm sorry, one thing you can do to make Him love you more or love you less. God's love for you is unchanging and it's constant. And I thank God for that. I thank God that He doesn't wake up in a bad mood. And say, okay, Mark, you blew it this time. I've had it up to here with you. And, uh, and start yelling at me. <laughs> That's not our God. Our God's not like us. His love is constant and consistent. So, <clears throat> we see that this love is, natu is not natural. It's supernatural. <laughs> it comes from God. Matter of fact, this love comes from God alone. As we continue on, God's Word backs this up. Here it is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for the sins of the entire world. That word propitiation means a substitute. He became our substitute. He gave His life for our lives. He took our punishment. And not only did He bear our sins in His own body, but He, gave, he exchanged our unrighteousness for His righteousness. He became sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. In Christ. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in Him. God is love. That's who He is. You know what? God can't help but to love you because that's who He is. <laughs> that's His character. That's just who He is. He's just, He is the God of love. God is love. That's His character. Love is 
not an option. You know, you say, well, Mr. Taylor, I don't feel like loving people sometimes. I don't feel like loving my brother and my sister. Sometimes I feel like killing them. Um, <clears throat> you know, God, if God gives us a command to love, He will give us the ability to love. All right? And I want to turn to a passage of Scripture in John chapter 5. And I've shared this with you before, but I, I think it's much needed verse to share with us, we cannot love like God loves, except through the power of the Holy Spirit. And John chapter 5 really describes that. He says in verse, <clears throat> let's see here. Well, let's start from the beginning. John, I mean, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. That's radical. We glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And here's the verse I want to capitalize on. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed or poured out in our hearts. And this is how you can love young people. Listen to me. By the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. When you receive Jesus Christ, you not only got His righteousness, but the Holy Spirit came into your life. And so when God tells a Christian to love like He loves, God gives you the power through the power of the Holy Spirit to love people where they're at and how He loves them. And so, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And so, it's not an option. It is a command. You say, wait a minute, Mr. Taylor. I, you know, sometimes I don't feel like, I, I just don't feel like I love people. Can I say something to you? You start showing that you love them, the feelings will come. We don't go by feelings. <laughs> we live by faith. And if we have the Holy Spirit and God commands us to love, He will give us the ability to love people, even our enemies. <clears throat> Those who talk bad about us. Those who give us viruses. Just saying. And so, it's a command. It's something that, you know, if you, if, if you want to go by feelings... I give you this illustration. You know, I don't I don't feel like chopping the wood, Dad. You know, I I, I just really don't you know I don't want to uh, I really don't well it's a command. You go out and you chop the wood and then once you start working up a sweat, hey man, I like this, you know, this is the only, only exercise. I'm I'm chopping the wood and getting the wood ready for the fireplace. You don't go and say, Hey listen, I'm gonna work up a sweat but I just don't feel like Listen to Dad's command. You just do it, and the sweat will come. And what I guess what I'm trying to say, young people, is you follow God's command, and the feelings will come. You obey, and the feelings will come afterwards. Some people are easy to love. Some people are very difficult to love. So, it's a command. It's not a feeling. And God does command us to love. It's not something optional where we say, you know what, I'm going to... I'm not going to love that people, that person because um, they're, they're just not the kind of people that I like to hang around with or, or love. Well, God commands us to love. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him or testing him, and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God gives us the ability to love. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And His love is perfected in us. 
What does that word mean, perfected? Well, it means to bring to completion. Okay? It means to, just like some of you have really grown in the Lord since the wilds. God is bringing you. He's completing you. He's growing you into Christ's likeness. He grows us that way by loving one another also. The love of God is perfected on us. It's coming to completion. We're growing in God's love so we can demonstrate and show love towards others. A leader, he's got a different type of love because it's God's love. This love will be noticeable mark of the Christian. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have love one towards another. There's no other great example that we can give to a lost world by loving one another. By demonstrating that love. For God so loved the world that He did what? He gave. <laughs> love is giving. It's sacrifice. Sacrificing self for the benefit of others. That's your God. And if we want to be like Him, we got to do what He says. And He'll give us the ability to do that. So, God gives us the ability to love. This love will be noticeable mark of the Christian. This love will be unexpected by the world's standards. But I say unto you, which here, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, Bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you. That we cannot do on our own, young people. We need God's grace to show God's love. We need God's love to show God's love. Matter of fact, anything minus love equals nothing. How does God give us his ability to love? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, you know when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, what's the first thing that comes out? Love. I think. Let me see. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Okay, let's back that up with Scripture. Alright? In Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, that's patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So when we're filled with the Spirit of God, you know what's going to happen? Love is just going to ooze out of us. <laughs> it's just like, you ever have a waitress? I did this, somebody did this at Cracker Barrel one time, a waitress, bless her heart. She filled my glass up with uh, either Coke or water, I forget what it was. And she filled that thing so much it just spilled out onto the table. You know, when we're filled up with the Spirit of God, it spills out into other people's lives. And God can use us when we're constantly, continually filled and walking in the Holy Spirit. So, love is sacrificial. I want to, want to just stop here just for a minute and go back to Matthew. pastor's been talking about uh, mountaintop living, and he's been going through the book of Matthew. But just to compare Scripture with Scripture, which I think is very a wise, smart thing to do. <clears throat> Jesus is speaking, You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbors and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. There's our leadership. There's who we follow. <clears throat> that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and the good. Wow. And reigneth and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them that love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? That's a natural love. It's natural love people that love you. Give you gifts on Christmas. I'm going to give you a gift. You give me a card. I'll give you a card. That's natural. Hey, how about sending you a card to somebody that you know don't like you? That's a challenge. 
How about giving a gift to somebody you know doesn't like? Maybe you heard talk about you. That is biblical leadership. That's Christ-likeness. And it says, So for if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than the others? Do not even the publicans so? Be therefore perfect or like Christ, even as your Father which is in heaven. So, just wanted to, to get... And here's another verse that goes with that. I just... I can't get away from this verse either. And, and I love this. This verse has so convicted me, young people. Because I'm growing too. I'm growing in my love for Christ. And He's perfecting His love in me. But this verse, I love, the, I love these verses. It says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but, can, but condescend to men of low estate. estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense no evil for evil. In other words, don't get back at people. Even when you're driving, Mr. Taylor. Mm -hmm. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place under wrath. Well, who? what place do we give it to? For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. We give it to the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. That's leadership. That's Christ-likeness. Overcoming evil with good. You will impact people like you would never believe if you practice this principle. Love is sacrificial. Love is not self-focused. Self it comes out of our world into the world of people that need Christ. They need light. They need salt. They need us. You know, this world, because of COVID, is hurting right now. And they need you and me to give them hope. To show them love. Can I give you some practical things? Some of you are already doing this. But they, they shall know you're my disciples by the love you have one, one for another. Can I give you some practical ways how you can love people? Send them a Christmas card and tell them you love them. Tell them you're praying for them. Call them. Text them. Instagram them. What's app them, okay? Facebook them, okay? Or whatever kind of social media you use, use it for the glory of God. Encourage people in the Lord. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're praying for them. That's a practical way that we can love people. Very simple way. Some of you are already doing that. I appreciate that. God is using that. I've heard comments of people in our church how much God has used the card ministry that some of you are involved in and we praise the Lord for that well you know what I'm going to stop here because I want to go back to this I want to review this this is so important um, that we uh, by God's grace and with his help apply this into our daily lives we're going to talk a little bit about love suffers long it's patient Love is patient. <laughs> and, and you know, a lot of us don't have that. Most of us don't have that. Patience, uh, patience is, we can only have God-given patience by God. <laughs> That's we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And some of us, including me, are not patient people. But aren't you glad that God's patient with us? <laughs> and we can be like Him. Because he, if He tells us to be patient, He'll give us the grace to be patient as long as we depend upon Him. Young people, we'll continue the study. Uh, not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday afterwards. Well, I, I, I guess that would be the Wednesday afterwards. But uh, continue your study. Um, if you watch live stream, watch Wednesday night. and Addison is preaching tonight. Uh, 
I want you to watch that message as well. He studied hard for that. He's excited about uh, uh, preaching on Wednesday night, and so am I. And um, but continue to. Uh, <clears throat> if you're not sick, come up here and get your protein worksheets. And if you are, you can fill them out later. Um, but you can attend church by watching live stream and continue reading your book uh, on biblical leadership. If you need any material, young people, let me say this to you and I'll close. If you need some study material, I have enough that I can give each and every person in our youth group two to three Bible studies books. Okay? So please don't hesitate to ask. Text me, call me, uh, however you want to get in touch with me. And so, so, so we can get some God and I material into your hands. Don't waste this time. Don't waste this time. Don't just watch TV and binge on that, okay? Get close to your God. God has given you opportunity, time. Redeem the time because the days are evil. And so if you need any material, I'll deliver that to you, okay? I'm serious. I'll deliver that to you so you can spend time with your God and be growing in grace, in knowledge, and in love. God bless you.